Bloch's method again was invented because you couldn't always factor things. I'm just going to slide this up so you can see a little bit better. So the first step with any question when you're solving it is going to be to figure out if you have a quadratic or if you don't have a quadratic. So remember, that's still your first step to solving something. This is a quadratic because it's to be solved in two. Your next step is to put it in general form. So make everything equal to zero. Gorgeous. Your third step is then to solve it by factoring or by using the box method. Either way is fine with me. Because this is the box method way, we're just going to initially go straight to that. Uh, if you try to do factoring with that, you can't factor anything. So this is a good example anyway, because when you can't factor, you have to box method. You don't have a choice. So that's why box method ever existed. The first step to box method, draw a box. What that box is really representing is an area diagram. And an area diagram is a binomial times a binomial. Our goal is to turn these quadratics into level two box method questions. If you remember level two box method questions were binomial squared equal a number. Right? Because those were easy to solve when we did level two. So our goal was to turn this quadratic into two binomials to go here and here that were the same thing. That was our goal. To do that, we start with the inside of the box and we work our way back outside. So I know that to create my first term, which is x squared, I'm going to have to multiply what by what? X x by x. It's the only thing that makes sense. So the only way to get this x squared is to have an x and an x as my first term of each binomial. The second thing I know, I know that this middle term is made up by these two terms right here, the diagonal term. And if I want two binomials that are the same thing, then those two diagonal terms have to be the same number. So what number is the same number that if you added them is equal to 4? 2. So I know that this has to be 2x and this has to be 2x. Because that's the only way I can get 4x where those are the same thing. What number has to go up here for the binomial then to create 2x? 2. 2 times x would be 2x. 2 down here. 2 times x will become 2x. I've created my binomials. I've got x plus 2, x plus 2. Those are going to be my two binomials. But there's a fourth box in that area diagram. And we want that fourth box to be negative 11. But unfortunately, it's not. What is 2 times 2? 4. And 4 is not 11. So what you have to do is you have to change this 11 to equal 4. What is that? Negative 11 or positive? It's negative 11. So we have to change that negative 11 to become positive 4. So what number are you going to have to add to negative 11 to create positive 4? And the answer is you have to add 15. So you have to add 15 to the quadratic to turn it into the quadratic you want. And if you do something to one side, you always got to balance it out. So you also have to add 15 to the other side. So I've changed this quadratic to be x squared plus 4x to be plus 15. And if it's plus 15, that means that I can rewrite that quadratic as just x plus 2 squared. Because I know that these two binomials would create that quadratic. So that's from getting x plus 2 squared. It's coming from the two binomials on the outside of my little box that I created. That is equal to 15. That's the number I have to add to both sides. So our goal with the box method was to take our quadratic and turn it into two binomials that are the same binomials. We've done that. The reason we wanted to do that was we now have a question we can solve. 
we get solved by square rooting both sides. That'll give you x plus 2 equals. And when I square root something in this class now, what do I have to put in front of it? Plus minus. Plus minus. As we learned yesterday, that square rooting creates a positive and a negative answer. My last step to figure out x is going to be subtract 2 from both sides. It's going to be negative 2 plus or minus root. That's x. How many people are remembering that? Feeling decent? Alright, we'll do a couple more, okay? And then you're going to add some time to practice. So, let's see if I can move this over here. <coughs> Second question. The first step in this unit. Figure out what type of equation you have. If you want to solve an equation, you gotta know what you're dealing with. Are you dealing with a quadratic or a linear equation? How do you know? It's B a quadratic or linear just step. You have an x squared, so it's a quadratic. Okay, that's important. You've got to be able to identify that. If there's x squared, it's a quadratic. Second step. If you have a quadratic, you need to make it in general form. General form means equal to zero. So I need to subtract 4 from both sides on this case. Otherwise, I wouldn't be equal to zero. Go. Your third step is now to try to factor that thing. If you try factoring it, trying to multiply the negative 4 and add to 8, it's not possible. So your next method to solve it is the box method. First step to the box method, draw the box. That box represents an area diagram. And our goal is to take that quadratic and turn it into two binomials. To do that, we're going to work with the inside of the box and work backwards. I know that this first slot creates the first term. So if I want to have an x squared, that means I need to have x on the other side. So I create x squared. My next thing is I know my diagonals create that middle term. Now I want those numbers to be the same numbers, right? Because it has to be the same binomial. So what two numbers are the same that would add to be positive 8? 4 and 4. So I know that 8x is going to break up to be 4x and 4x. Which means the other parts by binomial must be plus 4 and plus 4. That's how I create those first three things. It's the last term that makes things a little bit more challenging. Because the last term is supposed to be negative 4. But it's not negative 4. It's 16. That's where your problem comes in. The only way to deal with that, you can't change the box, but you can change the quadratic. So you need to get from negative 4 to 16. So you have to figure out what number can I add to negative 4 that will give me 16. And the answer is plus 20. If you're not sure how to figure that out, Subtract the two numbers from each other. So if you went 16 minus negative 4, it would equal 20. And that would tell you the difference that you need. Okay, I can't just add 20 to one side. That doesn't make sense. So I have to balance it out by adding 20 to both sides. I can now rewrite this quadratic to be these two binomials. 
which was x plus 4 times x plus 4. Recall x plus 4 squared. And equal to 20. Because of this 20 up here that I added to the 0. Everybody with me in the next step? Feeling decent now? The reason we did all that is so that I can now solve it. Because we know if we have something squared equals a number, those are easy to solve. Because all you have to do is square root both sides. And then basically, square root. You have x plus 4 equals 20. Square root. Square root. You have x equals minus 4 plus or minus root 20. Why is that answer not the right answer? Here's it. 20 can be broken down. So remember, you need to simplify your radicals. Root 20 is the same thing as root 4 times root 5. So that means that thing can change to be negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 5. So you're simplifying radicals every chance you get in this class. Chicker. E's the hardest one on this page by far. So if you try it on your own and you could not figure out the E, I don't blame you. Because something happens in E that we're not used to. I'm going to write something out. I don't want you to copy it yet because it's going to be wrong. Okay, it's not going to be the right first step. So if I was doing this thing and I was trying to solve it, the first thing I do is, is it a quadratic? My answer, it is a quadratic. So what I would do is I would rearrange it to be a general form. Please do not write this down. I'm going to erase it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start my box method question because I said you have to do box method for this question. If you try to diamond method it, I don't think it works anyway, so you have to box method it. If I drew my box, and I started my box off, and I know that the only way to get this term is to have it in the first box. I'm going to run into a problem. I need my numbers to be the exact same thing in each binomial. So what two things are the exact same that would multiply to give me 2x squared? So obviously I need an x and an x, but what number could possibly go in front of that it's the same number that equals 2. So 1.5 and 1.5 does not equal 2 when you multiply them together. That's what people tend to think. <coughs> That's really hard, isn't it? So we don't do that. That's why this question is a little bit more challenging. And in level 4, we're going to run into that problem a lot. In level 5, we're going to run into that problem a lot. The way to solve this one is quite easy. We know we can't have a 2 here. We can't do it. It's not going to work for us. So what we do is we look at the very original question, the very first step. We're going to recognize that that's 2x squared, and we do not want 2x squared. And the best way to get rid of that 2 is to divide by 2. So if you can divide everything by 2, that's what you should do. If you look... I can divide every number by 2, including the number on the other side of the equal sign. That also has to be divisible by 2, because that's your balancing like, of division by 2. So this question changes to x squared plus 12x equals 2. And now you can start your process all over again. But having an a value that's not 1, we don't know how to deal with that yet. So what we want to do whenever possible is make that a value equal to 1. Number in front of x squared. Whenever it's possible, we want it to be 1. Okay, so if you solve this thing, you can box this. Let me just subtract the 2 to the other side first. So subtract 2, subtract 2. So I have x squared plus 12x minus 2 equals 0. Sorry. Now I can do it. 
do the same process. You know the first term from the first box, so that first box has to be x squared. It means it's got to be x and x. Next step. You know that that middle term comes from right here and right here. And those numbers have to be the same. So 12x is going to split up to be 6x and 6x. That means your binomial is going to be 6 and 6. The last spot in the box is 36. Unfortunately, 36 is not what you have in your quadratic. So you need to change the negative 2 to become 36 by adding 38 to both sides. Now you can rewrite that quadratic to be the two binomials that we have, which is x plus 6 squared equals 38. Square root both sides. And move your 6 over. Always check to see if you can simplify your radic hand. Pretty confident that you can't. So that would be your answer. Any questions on that? I'm just going to move this up a little bit so I can draw what she's talking about. Oh, that's a risky. It's going to be gone forever. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to like that much. So, in the past, when we were just doing factoring questions, and I gave you something like, yeah, I gave you something like um, x squared. You had a question like that and you were told to factor it. You were supposed to get rid of the decimal, right? And you get rid of the decimal by multiplying by 2. So when you multiply by 2, I told you before, you had to balance that 2 out somehow. Right? You can't just do something and not have a balancing act to it. So I used to say you have to write it one half of something. Because that's the opposite of multiplying by two. And then you have this. Her question is, why didn't we put that one half outside on the question that we just did? And the reason we didn't do that <coughs> is because up until yesterday, your questions never had equal signs. No equal sign. So you had to balance it out somehow on the same side. The question we just did looked like this. There's an equal sign. So when I had to divide everything by 2, I balanced it out by also dividing everything on the other side by 2. So that balance is a note, so I don't need to write anything in brackets. So that's a very good question and a good point. If there's something on the other side of the equal sign, you don't need to write it out front anymore because you can balance it to the other side. Or it's kind of like a way scale. Like if you have an equal sign, everything's got to stay the same on both sides at all times. All right, there is a page for practice. Um, we're not going to practice that right now, I think. That should, there's not much practice in your practice book. So this basically is your practice book for box method. And okay, that's kind of the way to look at it. But I want to move on to level four. So, level four questions. We'll do A together to start things off. Um, we're going to go through the same process we just went through, and then we're going to run into a problem. So I don't want you to copy anything down yet. And I want you to make life easy, don't copy. 
First thing, is it quadratic? Answer is yes. Second thing is, is it general form? Answer is yes. Third thing is, can you solve it factoring? Answer is no. Now you need to do box method. To do box method, I said create a box. You know this is x squared, you know this is x, you know this is x. Now, to create this middle term, I said you had to add up these two terms right here. So those two numbers have to be the same number. What two numbers are the same that would add to be negative 3? You could do negative 1.5 and negative 1.5 if you want. But then you start getting into decimals. And show you what would happen. Negative 1.5 and negative 1.5. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. But now, what's negative 1.5 times negative 1.5 to fill up this little box in here? What's 1.5? One, two, five. And what's going to happen is you're going to start getting all these crazy decimals. Because now you got to ask yourself, what number do I add to that to get to that? And you're going to be adding 1.25 to each side. And then you're going to be square rooting 1.25. And things are going to get really messy really quick. The reason that this is happening is because your bill term up until right now has always been an even number. So if you look back at every example we did, it was always an even number, which meant it easily split up. So what we need to do is make that thing not an odd number, we need to turn it into an even number. Which sounds easy because you're like, oh, to make it an even number, I'm just going to multiply everything by 2. Right? Okay? Makes sense? That'll turn any odd number into an even number. If you do that, you're going to end up with 2x squared minus 6x plus 2, 0. And if you go to do your box method, you're going to run into the problem we just talked about. You now have an a value of 2. And you don't know what two numbers multiply to be 2. So, timesing by 2 is not the way to do this. I don't want you to fall into that trap of thinking middle term has to be even. Multiply everything by 2. Instead, to turn that middle number into an even number, you have to multiply everything by an even perfect square number. Because if you multiply by an even perfect square number, then you'll have a number in front that can turn into what you want it to turn into. So I'll show you a few examples of this because it's going to be kind of confusing. The number that you're usually going to multiply by is 4. Because it's low, and it's even, and it's a perfect square. So times everything by 4 in this question. Including whatever's on the other side, which is just 0, right? That's how you balance everything out. 0 times 4 is still going to be 0. Now your new equation is 4x squared minus 12x plus Four equals zero. It had to be a perfect square number that I multiplied everything by. And the reason why is when you go to do your box, because you chose a perfect square number, and you have to figure out what's going to become four x squared. By choosing a perfect square number, you created a situation that you can actually do. What two numbers multiplied will give me 4? 2 and 2. And they both have to be x. So by picking a perfect square number, it turned my middle number to an even number, which is what I wanted. And it turned my first term into something that's still able to break up into two things that are the same. The terminology I'm going to try to use, because Ms. Schaub uses the same terminology, so it's always good to have people on the same page. She says, rip a through for it. Uh, so she'll take a four and she'll multiply everything by four. And she just refers to it as, rip a four through that question and then start solving. 
So I'm going to try to use that terminology. Just in case you ever ask her for help and she says, well, rip a four through, and you're going to be like, what is she talking about? It just means multiply damage. Next thing, I know my middle term is created by these corners. Negative 12 and negative 12 would turn into negative 6x and negative 6x. <coughs> this is also a little trickier because before we used to just say, well, to get negative 6x, this just had to be negative 6. That's not true anymore because I'm not just timesing by x. I'm timesing by 2x. So what number times 2x would give me negative 6x? Negative 3. Remember, you're trying to build the outside by knowing the inside. Any questions on why I'm saying negative 3 instead of what I used to do? You know, it's just the same thing. It's an area diagram, right? Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Okay, last step. If you need to multiply negative 3 and negative 3 to become positive 9, so you have to figure out a way to go from positive 4 to positive 9. And now this question is just basically the same as every one. So plus 5 to both sides. We now have 2x minus 3 squared, because that's what I'm going to quadratic into, equals 5. I'm going to square root both sides to get 2x minus 3 equals plus or minus root 5. I have to get x by itself, so I add to both sides. I have 2x equals 3 plus or minus root 5. And the only thing that's going to be a little more challenging is that I don't have x yet. I have 2x, so I have to divide both sides by 2. So x equals 3 plus or minus root 5, all divided by 2. Ooh, that's hard to read. That's 3 plus or minus root 5, all divided by 2. So you can copy it down, it looks like this. <coughs> that would be your final answer. Yeah. I'm just trying to read the text. Can I make it to you? Even though I write 2 equals 1, so it would be 1. 1x. And there is. So there's a, the x is still there. There's an invisible 1x. You don't have to write the 1. You had to add the 3 first and then divide by 2. And you do bed and ask backwards. So I moved the 3. Yeah. Uh, it's positive because it was 2x minus 3. So I had to add 3 to both sides. Yeah. Scale box method gets a little bit trickier. general form, which it is, and I want to solve it by using the box method, I have to have an even middle term. How can I get an even middle term? Well, I could multiply it by something. The number I multiply it by has to be a perfect square number. Pardon? 25 is a perfect square number, but 25 times 5 will still give you an odd number, which is the problem. So it's got to be an even perfect square number, but you, 4 would be a perfect, e perfect square number to multiply everything by. So we're going to rip a 4 through this question, we're going to times everything by 4. So I now have 4x squared minus 20x plus 12 equals 0. Sorry I'm writing so small, there's not enough space up here to do all your work, and I'm sure you're in the same pain on your paper. So when I set up my box, I know that the first thing has to be 4x squared. The only way I can get 4x squared is if both first terms are 2x and 2x. I'm 
I then know that my middle term is created by these diagonals. And I want those things to be the same thing. So instead of negative 20x, I'm going to break it up into negative 10x and negative 10x. Now you're going from the inside out. So what term am I missing on the outside of my area diagram that would multiply by 2x to create negative 10x? Negative 5. So my answer on the outside is 2x minus 5 and 2x minus 5. Your last step is now to figure out what number should be the last term. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. That means I should be adding 13 to both sides. Because I was at 12, I now need to get a positive 25. Okay, now rewrite my quadratic to be 2x minus 5 squared equals 13. Square root of both sides. I square root of both sides. I have 2x minus 5 equals plus or minus root 13. I move the 5 over, so I have 2x equals 5 plus or minus root 13. And then divide by 2. So x equals 5 plus or minus root 13, all divided by 2. That would be my final answer. That's an exact value. Any questions? C. Now it's a little different. We look at it, we want to complete that question. We know the middle term is odd. And that's not good. An odd middle term means decimals are coming. We don't like decimals. We want whole numbers. So we need to turn that middle number to be even. And while we're doing that, we also need to make sure that our A value turns into a perfect square number. In this case, the A value is not 1 anymore. So multiplying by 4 is not going to work. If you multiply by 4, you would have 8x squared. That's not a perfect square number, so it can't be done. Instead, I could multiply everything by 2. And the reason why 2 works this time is because there's a 2 in front of the x squared. And 2 times 2 would give me 4x squared. Your goal is to always have a perfect square number in front and an even number in the middle. And now you can create a box for this question. I'm going to write a little bit bigger again. I have space below it. I know my first term has to be 4x squared, so it's going to be 2x, 2x. I know my middle term is created by the two diagonals. So instead of negative 10, it needs to be negative 5x and negative 5x. It's going to be tricky. So what number to fill out each binomial here? Yeah, go. 2.5 would work, right? If I want a number times 2, agree with that, 2.5 would work. It would be negative 2.5. Ugly. It's not what they were Am I ready for those? So I thought. Fix it without any fixing it, and it still looks ugly. No matter what, that's not going to fix it. 
negative 2.5. Big thing busted up with Frank's. When you get to a moment like this, where you had a perfect square number in the front, and that's good, and then you had an even number in the middle, that's good, and you do your equation, you start your box, and you still end up getting decimals. The reason you're getting decimals here is because when you split that middle term up, you got an odd number. And anytime you're doing an odd number times an even number, it's going to be broken up into a decimal. So you have two options. You can start doing some ugly stuff and create decimals like crazy. You could do that. That would not be fun. Or what you can do is you can start over again and try to create a different perfect square number that works better. Your goal isn't just a perfect square number and an even number. It's a perfect square number and an even number that when you divide it by 2, it's an even number still. So in this case, when we multiplied by 2, we created the situation we wanted, but 10 broken in half is negative 5. And that's not what we want. We want an even number when we break it in half. So instead what you're going to do is you're going to try to go to a different perfect square number. People are like, really? <laughs> yeah, really. There should be room below you to keep working. So instead of multiplying by 2, I'm going to go up to a different perfect square number. I'm going to ask myself, could I turn this into 9? Because that's another perfect square number. And 2 times anything is not going to go to 9. My next perfect next number is 16. So is there a way I could get 2 to become 16? Multiply by 8. 8 times 5 would give me 40. And 40 can break in half even to an even number. So instead of multiply by 2, I'm going to multiply everything by 8. Trust me, it just makes things way harder on yourself. So instead, we're going to try to multiply by 8 to give me 16x squared minus 40x plus 24 equals 0. And if you try to box method that, that thing, you'll avoid all your decimals. The reason why you're avoiding decimals is when you take an even number and you break it into two, you need to get two even numbers again. The reason this one didn't work is because 10 broken in half was 5 and 5. That's not good for you. You don't want decimal numbers, you, or you don't want odd numbers, you want even numbers. Let's try this box number and see if it works. First thing is 16x squared. That means we need to have 4x and 4x. The next thing is I know my middle term is negative 40, and that has to be broken up into two even things. Those two even things are going to be negative 20x and negative 20. The numbers that can multiply by 4x to give me negative 20x are negative 5 and negative 5. That means my last term in here is 25. See how that worked out much better? Do people understand the length that I'm talking about when I'm saying it has to break into even numbers and then you don't get those decimal problems? And it's okay if you do these harder box method questions and you realize that, oh, that didn't work. It just means restart the question. Yes. Um, I knew that I had to get shaded 20x and I had to time something by 4x to make that happen. So I knew that 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. 
That's why I chose negative 5. If you're ever in doubt, you just have to do division. Go negative 20 divided by 4, and that'll always tell you what your answer is. All right, I want you to try to solve that from that point. So see if you can take that thing from that spot and figure out what the answer is. Give me a shot. If you screw up, who cares? Okay. Alright, so your first thing you should have done is realize that that quadratic can be rewritten as the binomials 4x minus 5 squared. And it's going to equal 1. Then you're going to do what you always done. Square root both sides. I did that. I have 4x minus 5 equals plus or minus square root 1. Next thing is to move the 5 over. I have 4x equals 5 plus or minus root 1. Last step is divide everything by 4. I have x equals 5 plus or minus root 1 divided by 4. And then I do one more step. The reason I do one more step is because the square root of 1 is a perfect number. What's the square root of 1? It's 1. So I have two situations. I have 5 plus 1 divided by 4. And the second situation is 5 minus 1 divided by 4. So I calculate both those situations separately. If I do 5 plus 1, that's 6. 6 divided by 4 is 3 over 2. If I do 5 minus 1, that's 4 divided by 4. It's just equal to 1. So I just did these two situations separately. Situation 1 was do the addition and then divide by 4. Situation 2 was do the subtraction. Exactly. If you have a perfect square number, do that. The next two um, are going to be pretty much the same. So you need to be general form. So you're going to move your 7 over. Then you're going to have to multiply some number in there that would work out so that you had a perfect square number and a middle number that you could divide by 2 really easily. In this case, you're going to rip a 4 through it. And in this case, you're going to rip a 4 through it. So in both those questions, all you have to do is multiply by 4. I'm going to leave them as practice for you. You have three examples to try to follow. D and E are the exact same as A and B, so the steps are identical. Multiply everything by 4, do the box the exact same. But I want to move on to level 5 and make sure we at least get a couple of them done today so you have room to practice them. Okay, level five. Oops. Level five is basically the exact same as what we just did. So that one that we just did with the coefficient that was a different number, that's what level five is. So level five is when you have a coefficient that's a different number, it's just now we have some crazy numbers as our coefficients. Uh, a value in that other one was two, which is a pretty easy number to deal with. Now we have threes. Good. And seven. Uh,